Hi everyone and welcome. Today we are going to sew a wrap pillowcase in five minutes. Okay, maybe in 10 or 20 minutes because we have to agree that clearing the kitchen table, cleaning it, taking out the sewing machine, threading it and so on require a little bit of time and motivation. That being said, I can assure you that this little pillowcase is really easy to sew and that it takes no time. So let's get started with the pattern. You will see it is nothing but a big rectangle. To figure out how wide our rectangle should be, we are going to measure the width of our pillow and directly add another two centimeters for the seam allowance. The width of my tiny pillow is 15 centimeters plus two centimeters of seam allowance. 15 plus two equals 17 centimeters. Now to calculate the length of our rectangle, we are going to measure the length of our pillow. If like mine, your pillow is square, the width and the length will be identical, of course. Otherwise, it will be slightly longer. In both cases, the process is the same. We are going to multiply this length by 2.5. In my example, 15 cm for the length multiplied by 2.5 equals 37.5 cm. And here we are going to add not 2 but 4 cm in order to make a hem on each side of our rectangle. So in my example, we have then 37.5 plus 4 equals 41.5 cm. And voila, we can trace our rectangle now. It will have to be cut one time only in our fabric, or at least once per pillow, I'm just saying, because it could be quite addictive, especially if you are keen on interior design and home decoration. All right, to sum up, here we have the width of our pillow plus two centimeters for the seam allowance. And here we have the length of our pillow multiplied by 2.5, plus another four centimeters for the hems. Cartesian spirits will be longing to apprehend why I had to multiply the length of the pillow by 2.5. It is merely to obtain one time, two times and another half time the length. This way the fabric will be able to go all around the pillow with a little excess that will allow both ends to overlap, to position one on top of the other, that is, dearly holding our little pillow at the same time and, you know, keeping it warm and comfy. Congratulations, our pattern is finished and I promise that we are done with calculations for today. So, we will start by washing and pressing our fabric. A little tip for perfect pressing, let your fabric cool down before manipulating it and enjoy at the same time the nice and cozy heat on your hands. They are quite busy during the day and they truly need this well-deserved break. To trace the rectangle on the fabric, we can use Taylor's chalk, a sharp pencil, a pen of any kind, or, and that is really useful, this friction pen since the ink is erased by the heat of the iron. Anyway, for this project, our tracings will be hidden within the seams. To cut your rectangle, you can use sewing scissors or a rotary cutter on a cutting mat if you are the lucky owner of one of these. In any case, we shall meet in front of our sewing machines with well-traced, cut and ironed rectangles that we will neatly place on our workspace with the wrong side facing up and the right side greeting the table. Alright, are you ready? Let's begin with a hem on both sides of our rectangle. In my previous video, which was top 10 favorite tools for sewing, I introduced you to the sewing gauge. This little tool is as cheap as it is useful and I am going to set it to one centimeter so as to fold the edge of my fabric at one centimeter. Of course, you can use a normal ruler. Once it's done, double check your width and fold your fabric once again at one centimeter from the edge. Repeat this process on the other side of the rectangle, then press both hems or just pin them. Take your time and try to make beautiful hems straight and neat. This way the end result will be professional looking and pleasant to the eye. It is time to machine stitch our hems at 1 or 2 mm from the edge, but before that let's talk colors and threads. 
If you are working with a solid color, the best is to use a thread with the exact same hue. The choice is slightly trickier if, like me, you are working with a fabric that has a pattern on it. In that case, the first option is to use a color that matches the background of your fabric. But my favorite option is picking a color that matches the pattern instead. In both cases, anyway, it is important to make a straight seam since it will be visible. Today, again, I am using this great little sewing machine that is perfect for beginners instead of my large Bernina. Hopefully, this will be proof that it is certainly not necessary to spend a lot of money to achieve beautiful work. The most important thing is to know how to use the tools that we have, as modest as they might be. So let's stick the needle at 1-2mm to two millimeters from the folded edge so as to have the little groove of the presser foot perfectly aligned with the seam we wish to create. We start with a few fourth and a few back stitches to consolidate our seam and then we can go on stitching our hem. We do exactly the same at the end of the row to finish off the seam. Alright, when this is done, let's cut the threads at once and of course we are going to passionately press our hems. Now if you are unhappy with your seam, don't be scared, unstitch it and stitch it again nice and straight. To tell you the truth, I did it myself since I wanted to make a close-up of it without blushing and with a straight face. And of course I would have done it anyway even though I didn't have to film it. It is a matter of being proud of your work and doing your best. Okay, now we will have to fold our fabric like some sort of a wrap before stitching both sides. To do that, we need to know where exactly the fabric should be folded. And I have two techniques for you. The first one consists in placing our pillow at the very center of our rectangle and to wrap it directly with the fabric. Then we just need to spot and mark the fold. So here and here. The second technique, which is slightly more accurate, consists in measuring and marking the center of the rectangle. From this mark, we are going to make two other marks, one on each side. The distance between the middle mark and both outer marks equals the length of our pillow divided by two. Consequently, we will have the full length of our pillow between these two marks. All right, let's check. Yes, we are good. Also remember that for a square pillow the length and the width are exactly the same, but for a rectangular pillow the length will be the longer side, of course. Alright, we have now two marks for folding, but first let's have a quick look at the seams. On the right side, my seam is slightly prettier, therefore I will fold this side first and then my left side on top of it. The first side to be folded will be visible on the back of your pillowcase once it is completed. Also, regardless of the order you decide, don't forget to fold your fabric with the right sides together. We are going to pin our pillowcase before stitching it at 1cm from the edge on both sides. So as usual, we are holding the threads, we consolidate the seam at the start and the end, and we are trying to sew straight. Cotton doesn't fray much, still it will be important to finish off the row edges as well. It is possible to make a row of zigzag stitches with the sewing machine or to serge it with a serger. It is also possible to make a French seam which is quite beautiful and really neat. I linked down below my tutorial for bed pillowcases where I explain this technique in details. As for today, we are simply going to finish the edges with a zigzag stitch and I will show you how to make it properly. First, we start with a few back and forth straight stitches to really consolidate the seam. Then we set our machine to zigzag and make a whole row of zigzag stitches. At the end of this row, we go back to straight stitching and make a few back and forth stitches to prevent the seam from unraveling. Voila, it is fairly simple and much more cleaner and stronger than doing back and forth stitches with the zigzag on. 
Dear friends, we are almost there and if you are still watching this video, please take a moment to pause it and to leave me a little comment. Tell me, are you going to make this pillowcase yourself? Once it's turned inside out with the corners perfectly turned out as well, look how pretty it is. And to make it even better looking, you must know by now what I am going to recommend. Pressing, pressing and pressing again, of course. Voila, now you know how to sew a pillowcase quickly and easily in about five minutes or, you know, slightly more. And believe me, you will become addicted. We just have to insert our pillow inside the pillowcase and admire the fruits of our labor. If you want to go a little bit further, it is possible to add buttons and buttonholes, for instance, or strings to make a cute little bow. It is also possible to add, and you know how much I love doing it, a handmade customized little tag with a name or a sweet word on it. It can be placed on the back of the pillow or inserted in the side seam, for instance. You will find the link to my handmade tags tutorial, to the stamp that I use and to every single tool from today's tutorial in the description box below. Happy sewing to all of you. Send me pictures of your pillowcases through Instagram. Leave me messages in the comment section. I am always thrilled to read them and of course very, very proud to admire and share your creations. Bye bye. A bientôt.